Hello and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3, where we are so, so close to fighting Mr. Big Bad Guy himself of Act 2, General Ketherick Thorn. As a matter of fact, we are here in his bedchambers right now, uh, where we left off last time. And there is one thing that we're going to take a look at before we go find the man himself. And that is namely this uh, hidden diary or letter or whatever it is. Confidential. Dictated to Scribe Yanthus by General Ketherick. Now, this is very important. Young Gortash's plan to enslave an illithid elder brain and make it our marionette under control of the crown of Carsus has proceeded almost without flaw, barring the slight delay while our Baelist allies sorted out their leadership conflict. The weak point must surely be the sharing of the Nether Stones. It was necessary to secure my engagement and that of the murder cult, but eventually it's certain to fracture our fragile alliance. Clearly, all three Netherstones must be controlled by a single leader, me by preference, but not until after all the stakeholders have made their essential contribution. Gortash fears that, energized by the dark energies of the crown, the brain we no now call the Absolute will eventually metamorphose into something new and more difficult to control. If he's right, the need to invest the power of the nether stones is in a single wielder is urgent. Even more so in that Enver Gortash, at least, must be thinking the same way. So Gortash and Ketherick, as we see here, are the main two conspirators. And really, not to say that the Illithid are innocent in all this. Clearly, they With haste. are... Uh, always bent on conquest and domination, but they are also, in a way, pawns to this greater plan. So, um, without further ado, I believe, let's see, where did we end up? Uh, it was in this little antechamber here, if I'm not mistaken, that is being guarded. Uh, and now we must go find the general himself. So we're all short rested up. You know, we're doing okay on spell slots mm. for Shadowheart and Gale. You know, wish we could be coming in at full, but that is not what uh, fate has brought us today. So let's see what lies on the other side of this door, shall we? Oh, that was quick. He has been cornered. You. What have you done? What have you done to me? Nothing that you haven't done this to yourself. Yeah. Melodia wanted more for you than this, Catherick. Stop, and you may redeem yourself yet. I feel like this is a very big check. We'll get guidance for it. Basically, we need to just not roll in that one. There is no redemption, can't you see? It is too late. If Melodia could see all I've done, she'd know. She'd know her husband died long ago with Isabel. Unlike Isabel, he could not be brought back. Well... You're wrong, it isn't too late for you, or Melodia is waiting for you in the afterlife. Return to Saluna and your souls will be reunited. And then so you will continue this to what end? I say let's just keep appealing to his love for his wife. Melodia is waiting for you in the afterlife. I wish it could be so. I do. But the Moon Maiden did not intervene when my life was dismantled piece by piece. And when I tried to buy it back, it cost me everything. Everything. We are copper pieces in their belts. Tokens to be traded for scraps. You have beaten me, true soul. But the gods beat me first. Yeah. I mean... 
I can help you if you let me. It isn't too late. Your story doesn't end here. Come quietly, you'll be spared. And then the mean option. <laughs> um, either one or two. I can help you if you let me. Or your story doesn't end here. I mean, we're a bard. Let's go with the more bard-like answer, right? Oh, no. Bad time for this. Not that I blame her, of course, but... Rise, you dog! Retribution has come, and her sword is my sword. Um, yeah, let's let's not execute defenseless prisoners if we can avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> Ketherick Thorne would sooner die than lay down his rank cause. Isn't that right, General? I was a fool to hesitate. Power like mine cannot be hidden, cannot be cowed. But power like mine has a price. A price I am destined to pay. You have one last chance to bow. Once it's gone, I'll have no choice but to destroy you both. Do you hear? Oh, good thing we have the artifact with us. The prison. You've had it all this time, you worm. You will bow before me. And if you will not bow, you will break. He will crumble at the power of your touch. Give him all you have. The gods fight at our side. Oh, I guess we're doing this. I don't know if crumbling is the is <laughs> is the right word. Wow, we've had a uh, we were very lucky though to roll so many so high in initiative. So let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got this Mistress of Souls. I thought we had killed her, hadn't we? Am I, am I making this up? Maybe there was somebody who was. Maybe this is like a clone body or something. I was fairly certain we'd killed her last episode. Anyway, uh, here's Ketherick. Oh, look, he's got a little uh, a little warhound. That's so cool. Aura of protection and aura of hate. Ketherick Thorm himself. Let's take a look at his uh, stats here. Very high in charisma. He's the weakest to intelligence, so if we want to do any intelligence saving throw type spells... That's what we're going to target. Yeah, Charisma. We're going to have a hard time uh, getting him down on that. So he's a paladin. He's also considered undead, although I'm sure he has a whole bunch of resistances to traditionally, you know, cleric anti-undead undead stuff. The paladin and any nearby fiends and undead deal an additional five bludgeoning damage. Okay. He is resistant to necrotic. He is immune to poison. Uh, what else here is of note? It's an extra attack, yep. Uh, can't be char- or advantage on being charmed, can't be put to sleep. Spells that alter someone else's form have no effect on the affected entity, and has plus five bonus to saving throws that would remove it from the plane. So that's meant to counter polymorph and banishment. Uh, improved divine smite, okay. Uh, when activated, you can't be moved against your will by any spell or action, but have disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. If this is activated, I don't know. I guess this is a uh, like a piece of armor he has to activate manually. And then shield bash. When a foe hits you with an attack, you can use a reaction to knock it prone. So that's maybe good that we don't have Lazel Hill here for this particular fight. So... Uh, what kind of... How is his wisdom? Um... Yeah, oh, wait. Plus 14 to saving throws. Plus 11 to saving throws. <laughs> plus 6 to saving throws. So he's the weakest to dex and intelligence. And even with intelligence, I mean, he still has plus 6 to saving throws. So that's still going to be hard to get him down. Which means we can't rely on disabling. We have to go for just straight up, like, damage race. If that makes sense. Okay. 
Arrow of Humanoid slaying. I mean, that seems like a good opportunity for it, right? Oh, he's not a humanoid because he's undead. <laughs> of course. Of course. Uh, silence wouldn't be a terrible thing to cast on him. Hmm. That means that, um, of course, spells can't, or most spells can't be cast. I'm wondering if maybe dropping it just a big thing of silence, like right here to get some of these spell casters. I wonder if that would be useful. Um, I guess we don't necessarily have to have Penelope go first. We could see how everybody else does. Jahera, unfortunately, has no wild shape charges, and we had already used one long or short rest, and I didn't want to use a, uh, a second one there. Entangle, Ice Storm. I mean, of course, Ice Storm. That's probably what we're going to want to go for. Just use the big ones right off the bat, you know? Um, yeah, we'll probably just have her... Uh, just keep her tucked back here. She's got a lot of first and second spell slot, uh, level spell slots, so sh that'll be good for casting um, these Cure Wounds. That's probably what we'll mostly use her for. But yeah, let's let's start off and use these bigger um, spells right off the top. So impel, impel a storm of hail and ice to crash from the sky, covering the ground and striking all objects and creatures within range. So that's actually going to be very helpful for making people fall prone. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So maybe I'll just drop it like right here so that most of the area around him will be covered. So uh, let's do it. Uh, I don't need them to save. That's fine. Cool. So she is down a significant amount already. He barely took any damage because he saved. But all of this is icy terrain now, so hopefully that will cause one of them to go prone. Jahera, we don't need you in harm's way. And I'm worried about AoE spells, of course, so we're just going to have her go straight this way. We're going to try to spread our party out as much as possible so that, like, 30-foot um, spheres or, or what have you won't hit us all. And uh, that's Jahara's turn. Man, tough question. I'm wondering if maybe we should focus down this Mistress of Souls first before we go for Thorm. 65%. Honestly, not a terrible use. Tasha's Hideous Laughter, it's a, it's a uh, first level enchantment. So that's not a bad use from an economy standpoint. Uh, we want to make sure we make full use of all of our um, things like haste and blur, etc. I don't know, maybe we want to cast haste on somebody, just... Uh, we could even cast haste on the Sword of the Moon Maiden, like having her hasted might be very cool. But no, I'm going to give it to Shadowheart. She's the cleric. These are pretty much almost all undead, so... Having her be able to uh, jump in will be helpful. We'll have Penelope move over here. We'll make sure she's equipped uh, from a melee perspective. Anything that we want to drink as far as potions go. Well, not <laughs> nothing that does poison because I'm pretty sure everything here is going to be immune to poison. Uh, anything that we can dip our weapon in. The Oil of Sharpness? That's actually not a bad idea. Overcomes resistance to non-magical damage. Sure. We'll pop that on. Cool. So our sword is coated in it. And uh, unless we want to move a bit more, maybe we'll move back slightly as well. That's her turn. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I resummoned the Raven. It's been a while since we've had Quoth. Both the Raven, our little familiar friend here. I'm thinking maybe we have him come over here. He may die almost immediately, but that's fine. We kind of know, we know the drill. We'll try to blind, and she is blinded, which is fantastic. Um, and we'll just end his turn. He'll just camp out there, which is totally fine. 
we for sure want to try to turn undead as much as we can. Does she count as an undead? No, she's a human. Yeah, she does not count as undead. But there are four of them right here that would be fantastic to turn. And she's hasted. So we could almost entirely take out this crew here. It's kind of what I'm thinking. Let's move her here in the middle of everything. We'll use one of her channel divinities. And we're going to turn undead. Beautiful. All right, one of them failed outright or died outright. The rest of these are turned, so <laughs> that's pretty nice. And then we'll summon our spiritual weapon uh, for our bonus action, I think. And we'll do a... Um, what do we want to do here? We'll do a great axe right here next to the sorceress. Pretty good initiative. All right. And then spells, spells, spells. We could get spirit guardians going, honestly. Why not? You know? Radiant damage, for sure. Cool, and two more of them down for the count. And maybe I could even get three. Possibly. How close can I get? Yeah. <laughs> so Shadowheart single-handedly has taken out half of the minions over here. Which is too good. And uh, we'll end her turn. Alright, let's see what she decides to do. This m supposed Mistress of Souls. Opportunity attack from the Raven. Love it. Incubate death. What does that mean? Double miss. Very cool. Okay, now Gale. I'm guessing... I don't know what incubating means. Is that a status effect that she has? It's not. I'm wondering... What did that say in the, the chat log? Or not chat log. The status log here. Skeletal involucre received condition incubating. What's a skeletal... Involucre. Is that a statue or something here? Like, are, the, are these gargoyles going to come to life? Or is it saying that she's going to try to resummon these necromites? It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, she is a necromancer, obviously. I don't see anything that... Oh, here it is. Here it is. I see it now. So what is this? An egg-like shell of spiny bones and rotting feathers. Necromantic energy oozes from within. Skeletal involucre will explode on its next turn, dealing um, a bunch of necrotic damage and birthing a necromite. So we for sure don't want to be around when that happens. Good to know. Um, so she's going to keep summoning those things to try to deal AoE damage to us. I think we'll go ahead and use our 5th level Conjure Elemental. I'm probably going to save the rest of my 4th level slots for counter spells because I imagine there'll be one or two nasty surprises as we saw with Disciple Zarel. But Conjure Elemental, see, ooh, what do we want to do here? Air, Earth, Fire, Water. Long ago, the Four Nations, etc, etc. If you know, you know. Um, I mean, how can we not do Fire? Like... To me, fire is the coolest one. Uh, and we'll summon it right here on top of uh, this enemy here. Nice. Fire elemental. Level 9. Roll decent initiative. And then we, of course, let's... <laughs> here's what I'm thinking. Let's come over here as close as we can to Shadowheart. The reason I'm not tucking him behind the pillar is that I want him to have line of sight on Sustera and Catherick Thorm so that we can do some counterspelling if we need to. Um, and other than that, not much else I can do with him. All right, Catherick is going to go. Let's see if he decides to... Oh, well, that's cool. So he didn't even have to make a strength saving throw to not fall prone. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it worked. <gasps> Old man slips on stairs. <laughs> Reach from beyond. It's a cantrip. Don't need to uh, do that. So there goes the raven, but that's fine. 
Fire Elemental got hit. Honestly, Fire Elemental is pretty good for just tanking a bunch of damage. I don't hate that. And a bunch of misses from these uh, Necromites. Alright, Will and the Fire Elemental share a turn. Let's see what the Fire Elemental can do. He's got Erupting Cinder. Stoke a giant cinder ball and lob it, bursting in a wide explosion and creating a fiery surface. So that's a ranged attack, of course. A multi-attack. Descend on a creature and scorch it with a multitude of primordial flames. Yeah, let's do a multi-attack on her. Oh, nice. She's got eight hit points left. Yeah, so here's what I'm thinking with Will. We'll just Eldritch Blast to um, finish her off. One here. And can I hit Ketherick Thorn from here? I can. Um, I could hit a Necromite, but here's the thing. I think I almost want them bunched up so that Shadowheart can jump over here and do the same thing as before. Um, Alright, we've already taken some damage. Maybe hit this Necromite right here. Let's, let's go with that. Nice. Double kill. <laughs> Will is nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Alright, with that, I say let's have him start going towards Ketherick Thorm. He's probably going to be most useful there. He's got his rapier ready to go. The fire elemental. What do we want to do with the fire elemental? I would like the fire elemental to be able to get some uh, attacks on Ketherick Thorm. I think I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go over here for now to threaten this necromite. And be able to get an opportunity attack off. So end turn and... Uh, yes, end turn. Alright. The doggo is going to jump down and avoid the ice. Very smart. Ooh, hit the fire elemental for a couple points of damage. Don't love that. Alright, is it possible for me to get an attack on the dog with spiritual weapon? It's not. Can I do it on... Very hard to see. Let's go tactical. Can I get an attack off on this guy? Not really, unfortunately. So we may just have to spend the turn moving. Honestly, I'm just going to position the, it over here so that when Ketherick Thorm comes down, hopefully the spiritual weapon will be in a good position to get some damage off. All right. The Moon uh, Maiden's turn. Sick. Lacerate, what does that do? I'm not gonna cutting it that. Oh, whoa! That's a ton of chunk damage done all at once. Opportunity attack from Gale. I'm actually not gonna react because I want to save it for a counter spell. Uh reach from beyond, I don't really care. Missed anyway. Alrighty now. So Shadow Heart. Can you get all the way over here? Yeah, you can. Actually, something like that, and then maybe still have some movement left. I don't know how that'll work. Got a little bit of movement left. Oh, this guy is just like just out of range right here. You're so lucky, man. But cool, uh, we still have our two actions, honestly. <laughs> I'm thinking we just Sacred Flame these fools, like, may as well, right? Where are they? There's one here. Where do they go in the initiative? I probably want to take out these closer guys first, if I'm honest. Um, Sunbeam is already used, which is a shame. It is an absolute shame. But it's okay. Let's just clean up a little bit. So there's one. And then for the second action, or second, uh... The second one. I think we'll save this guy. Some, like, Will can potentially take get an Eldritch Blast on him. 
so we'll leave them alone. I kind of want to clean up the ones over here. Maybe even... Do people take damage in the start of their turn? Um... What does it say? Nearby enemies take 3 to 24 radiant damage per turn. I don't know if it's at the start of their turn, so, like, it would be a waste. It might be a waste. Uh, actually, here's what I'll do. I'll do a Sacred Flame on the Hound. Cool. Yeah, that works. That works for me. Alright, Penelope. Very important turn here. I want to stay visible enough to be able to do um, cutting words, stuff of that nature. I mean, you know what I could do, like a, a magic missile, take this guy out, and almost entirely take this guy out. Again, I want to save most of my third and fourth level spell slots for counter spells. That's why I'm not like jumping to use those immediately. Yeah, maybe even a, a second level magic missile. The second level, um, 44 plus 4, so that means it's a minimum of 5. Right? Do I have... Did I do that correctly? Or no, it's 1d4 plus 1 per dart. Something like that. Yeah. So 2 to 5. Yeah, that's... It means what it says. So we'll, we'll take the risk. We'll shoot one there. It may not kill him if I don't roll well on damage. Target is too far. Oh, okay. We'll move forward uh, a tiny bit in that case. We'll do one here. And we'll do... A, I don't want to hit the fire elemental. I want to hit the bad guy who's right next to them. It's not giving it to me for some reason. Oh, I want to do second level as well. So, one. Can I hit Ketherig Thorn from here? Actually, I can. Two, three, four. That, that works for me. Get the guaranteed damage. Cool. So, I killed this guy, which is fantastic. Did a bit more damage. We're still chipping away. And I am going to... Maybe come over here in the middle. I think we're spread far enough apart that it should be okay. And then I could give a Bardic Inspiration to somebody, like maybe even Dame Aelin. But I'm going to hold on to it. We're, we're, we've, we're on the, we've got the upper hand at the moment. I don't want to be premature about giving those out. All right, Thorn uh, Whip. Ooh, watch this play, if this works. So I want to... You, this this cantrip will pull creatures towards you. So if I'm right here and I use it on this guy, will it pull it into Shadowheart's uh, Spirit Guardians? Yeah, it sure will. It didn't kill him, but that's still pretty good. Not bad for a cantrip, right? All right, and then from here, what do I want to do? Again, I want to stick to second and first level spells, if possible. So... Let's come over here. So we've got line of sight on Ketherick Thorm. I don't want to do Firebolt, because I want that terrain to remain rough, or, uh, like, difficult for him. Actually, a Ray of Frost. 30%. Hmm. Can I cast it across the way at this guy? Not quite. Not quite. Not quite. Uh, I'll just do Ray of Frost. It's probably going to miss, but that's okay. This is more about positioning than anything else. Yeah, no problem. Did what I wanted to do. Repositioned. Whoa, he still took a ton of damage from Enough. Moonbeam. Oh, wow. My lord beckons me. <laughs> 
You must return to your prison. And my daughter must be reclaimed. Your daughter? Isabel. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Yikes. You will fall as sure as she. This has only begun. Oh no, what can we do? It just disintegrated her? That tentacle was colossal. How can such a thing be possible? Or was that a... I don't know if that was a disintegrate spell or if they just teleported away, if it was like a dimension door type thing. All right, well, we'll clean up. We'll clean up around here. Man, I'm wondering if I <laughs> if I should have summoned this fire elemental if that was a waste. All right, well, well, let's let's come in hot. Can I get the angle on this guy? Let's get this guy down. He is in massive pain. Okay, and turn there. And that frees us up to do a multi attack on the hound. All right, not bad. Hound's turn. A little bit of damage on the fire elemental. Spiritual weapon, not doing much, but no surprise there. Uh, so it's just the hound that's left. Hey, you! Toenail tasting truck hole. Oh boy, that is not the way I expected this to go. You okay, Fire Elemental? <laughs> not until Son's dead for good. Yeah. I'm wow, not what I expected. Find to we'll camp take the key. Mercolite Scourge, we'll send that to camp. Let's just do a little bit of uh, collecting real quick. Some bits and bobs. Yeah, interesting. So that was probably the Elder Brain or whatever the Elder Brain has grown into, you know, from the uh, the Elithid uh, Hive Mind. Nothing there. And they're down in that tower. Isn't that the same tower we stuck our hand into briefly before and almost got pulled into it? I wonder how that how things would have turned out differently. All right, let's see if there's any scrolls here we can come away with. Oh, you know, baby, vampiric touch, very cool. Uh, necromantic codexes, they're enigmas. This sounds enticing. Stamps in the end papers indicate this book was once part of the library of the High Heralds when they occupied Moonrise Towers. The librarian's summary reads as follows. Very old scholarly treatise about obscure necromantic tomes and codexes, their mystic and arcane locks, and how to unlock and decipher them. At the end, the librarian appended the following note. Urgent request from researcher Ilan Toth to borrow this book officially denied. Stated casual interest in the notorious necromancy of Thay, but is a clear warning sign that his interest is anything but casual. In any event, this isn't even the book he wants. That's the Tharsiate Codex. That's actually important because we have the Necromancy of Thay in our possession. And I uh, I just haven't done anything with it. I kind of forgot that we had it for the longest time. Since we had other things uh, that were pressing. A note from Gortash. Okay, just a note to say that I was alarmed to learn that your strike teams have not yet recovered the artifact. The Githyanki appear to be after it, after it as well. I'll have more to say about this when time allows, but it's essential that your troops do not allow that object to slip between their fingers. Gee. Yep, well, everybody wants it, but nobody can have it. Only me. Man, this little ice trick was pretty clutch there. What have we here? Exhort the Risen and Ghoulish Touch. Subjugate the undead with your commands. And lash out with deadly claws and paralyze the target. 
That is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely have to find somebody to give that to. Hmm. Alrighty, so this is blocked here. Let's just make sure that we are exploring these areas around here. I see Jahara is waiting for us over here. She's probably going to say that she this can't come with us. Quite a view once. Yeah, quite a view is right. Alright, I want to say we've picked up just about everything. We haven't looked over here yet. But... A quick scan... Tells me I don't think there's much here that's worth checking out. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's see what uh, Jahira has to say. The general will call that a tactical retreat, I'm sure. But you have him on the run. That thing he summoned was illicit. Follow it below and find him before he has a chance to subdue the night song again. Okay. Um, aren't y'all gonna come with us, or do you have more business here? Better they stay here, and hold the tower should Ketherick's army catch wind of our assault. Yeah, that's fair. But if you have room for one lone soldier, I would face Ketherick by your side. Oh, I mean, yeah, of course. Do you think your soldiers can hold out against an entire army? If our luck holds, they won't need to. If it doesn't, well... They are Harpers. Being outnumbered is part of the job. But the sooner we reach Catherick and rob his army of their reason to fight, the better. That's true. Can't argue with that. Do you know what to expect when we find Theory them? Theory and supposition. None of which will help us in the fight to come. Okay. Catherick must die. And the absolute with him. We will work out the details as they rear their ugly heads. Just do it on the fly. Make it up as we go along. Uh, yeah, come along. You have numbers enough already, I think. You'll want a small force if you are to finish this quickly. Oh, okay, so you don't want to come. Got it. I guess maybe if we had an open party slot, she would be willing to come. But we don't, which is totally fine. Alright, we're jumping into the weird tentacle goo, as was foretold. <laughs> Anything we need to do before we jump in. I actually don't think we need to short rest. We actually have all of our bardic inspirations. We have both warlock slots. The only thing we could potentially use is Shadowheart's channel divinities. Ooh, to rest or not to rest? I mean, it seems like it's the final fight, doesn't it? Maybe we should we get it just to get those channel divinities back? Oh, actually, this will do. We'll, per we'll do a pearlescent restoration. We'll get her a third level slot back. There we go. So that's a little bit of extra uh, something to play with there. I think we're fine. On the off chance that we need to rest down there, I'm just going to... Oh. You peer down the hole left by the tentacle that drew Ketherick into the darkness. Will you leap after him? Yeah, I think we're ready. Let's do it. The hole yawns back at you, impossibly wide. A single tentacle burrowed through stone. Should we cast Featherfall or... Nope. Just jump. <laughs> Gross. This is an illithid colony. This must be where they harvest the tadpoles. We're close to the source of the infections. Yuck. Okay. So this is all. I meant to rescue somewhere near. Oh, right. Will was supposed to rescue somebody at um, Ms. Uh, uh, what's her name? Mizora, at her behest. Some membrane. Oh, did I take damage from that? 
Tread carefully. We are very close to the source of the Absolute now. Yeah. That telepathic storm has become a tempest. Oh, hello. Should we chat? She They're waits. not attacking. Seems they think we're allies. I mean, I'm okay with that. I'll, I'll, I can use some friends. Uh, let's check our map. Which way? Blade of Frontiers. Rescue Zariel's asset from Moonrise Towers. Oh, cool. Maybe we'll go this way first, I guess. There's not much to see around here. The flesh. Whoa. Okay. Ew, okay. Yep. Tadpoling center. Whoa. Look at these busy little bees. Uh oh, these are these are people all stuck in tadpole. Uh the pond is and civilians. Of psychic energy side by still side. linger about it. And this must be where they infect and transform those they kidnapped. You see the streets of Baldur's Gate. The emblem of the flaming fist. Martial drills and courtly dances. You feel the courage of a soldier who became a commander. And the intelligence of a commander who became a duke. Raven Guard was oh, here yeah. in this pod not long ago. His father. Yeah, Will's father was here. Alright, I don't see who's in here. But I guess we can free them, the right? This release is a stream of fragmented memories and emotions. All that remains of the pod inhabitants' former self. Amusement. Curiosity. Fascination. He believed the horrors of Moonrise to be a fleeting dream that fade on waking. Oh, I mean, that's probably the best case scenario, just to think that this is a dream. Here goes nothing. This pod pulsates with the angry memories of Raven Guard's search officer, Manip Shurga. She laments her failure to locate him. Hmm. Desperation, pain, terror. Cultists raided his village. He was the sole survivor. Your lungs burn with the dry heat of the fires raging about you. But the pain is not enough to diminish your swing. One goblin after another falls to your blade. A man's voice cries out through the thick smoke. Raven Guard! You call, but the clang of swords and spell shouts of attacking drow are your only reply. So all of these are basically Raven Guard's uh, ret retinue. Delirium. Mania. Laughter. <laughs> A chance. His mind broke before the end, and he was laughing uncontrollably as the skin fell from his face. Oof. You remember the shattered windows of Alterel's High Cathedral, the burning black sky of Avernus beyond. In its horror, the blood war unites you. Tiefling, dwarf, and elf alike huddle behind the shields of your paladin order, waiting for salvation. When it comes, Please. disunity, the returned city casts your people out, the devils who drag them down to hell. In the end, it is not your paladin oath that is broken. It is your faith itself. Uh, is there any way that we can free them, or...? Oh, no. The device does not react to your presence. Courage. Conviction. Defiance. Children. Even as her organs began to dissolve, she believed she could resist. The device does not react to your presence. Okay, cool. Neural apparatus. Now, what does this do? I'm afraid to ask. Oh, I didn't say touch it. Forms a telepathic <laughs> connection with the device, and a chorus of static energy fills your mind. Every mind flayer in the room calls out hungrily from its pod, seeking release oh. and sustenance. Let's not do that. There are others in the pods. Those not yet infected, not yet a lithid. 
terrified, desperate to escape. Yeah, there's a few the of them that looks like we could to rescue. Your temple's command to your authority. Um I mean release them, I guess, right? Oh, we're rolling an initiative. Got it, got it. So, yeah, intellect devourers don't like that we did that. Understandable. Couple mind flayers here, so we've got a... Got it. Oh, it's Zevlor. Yeah, we were supposed to look for him. Okay. Whoa. Uh, what just happened? I was just trying to see who these different people were on initiative. I didn't know... What am I looking at? Ceres Elturian Scout. We're back. We're back in the last light in for some reason. <laughs> well, good for her. She's she's over there in the last light in somehow. So for now we've got initiative. Definitely want to take out the mind flayers first. Good thing that we saved our um our short rest, isn't it? Very good thing. Okay, let's see what their stats are. They're just regular mind flayers. They're resistant to magic, but they don't have any. They're pretty squishy, it looks like. Um, so what are we going to do with Shadowheart? Maybe even just a Spirit Guardians, because there's a bunch of low-level enemies around here we probably want to uh, contend with. And she doesn't have... Counter spell the way that some of the other spellcasters do, so I'm actually okay with maybe upcasting. Yeah, with upcasting spirit guardians at the fourth level. We'll do the radiant variety. Yeah, let's do it. Cool, and then we'll walk over here. And they're going to be in the sauce. Uh, and we'll just hold there for now. Penelope is right on top of a Mind Flayer. Not a good position to be in. What if I did like a, a hypnotic pattern? How would that work? I don't want to hit my allies if possible, but I may have no choice. Or I could just not do that. There might be a better way to get around this. Um, what do I want to do here? Let's do our sword song, I think. Yeah. There we go. Buff our allies a little bit. Let's go this way. And then in here to try to get a bunch of them together. All right, we're going back to the last slide in for some reason. That's gonna that's not gonna be tedious every turn. Nice. Okay. Opportunity attack? Yes, for sure. Divine strike, poison? Sure. Why not? He's outside of Spirit Guardians. Rookie mistake. Alright, we still have our Fire Elemental, fortunately. The multi-attack is doing work. I don't fancy their chances. Okay, Gale, 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 Gale. Again, I want to save a bunch of spells for Ketheric Thorn. I could do like a hold person. Oh, it must be a humanoid. They're not considered humanoids, huh? Uh-huh. Maybe just a firebolt in that case? Just try to focus them down as much as possible? Alright, or not. That's fine. Cool. Nicely done. Uh-oh. Tentacle whip. What does that do? Possibly stun the target? Ooh. Yeah, I was just going to hope that we saved. Yikes. 
Alright, then there's the, these little guys who I'm a little concerned about. I should be able to clean them up uh, with with uh, Will, especially. Oh no, my Spirit Guardians is down. That really sucks. That was a big part of my strategy here. Alright, well, Eldritch Blast. Let's do one on them and do one on him, I think. <laughs> and a double kill again. Oh, I don't think... Actually, that wasn't a kill, but still. How many times has Will done that, though? Honestly. He is good at what he does. I will say that. I think we'll just keep him where he is, honestly. Oh, yikes. A bunch of us are stunned. I wish I could have... Uh, should I Hellish Rebuke that? I wish I could have counterspelled that, but maybe it's not a spell. Yeah, let's Hellish Rebuke it, I think. Alright, all hands on deck, I guess. Alright, I'm stunned. That really sucks. I think some people saved, though. Yeah, Gale saved, because it was an intelligence saving... Uh, yeah, intelligence saving throw. Alright, the Mind Flayer is dead, but there's still three of them up, which concerns me. We may have to dish out some big daddy damage with like a fireball. And I can I can um, avoid hitting allies because I am an evocation wizard. Ooh, I can hit four of them like this. Yeah, let's do it. That's the way to do it. You don't mess with Gale. Thank you, allies. Thank you. Opportunity attack? Um, actually, no. Not this time. Alright, that's fine. It is but a scratch. Who do I want to go for? I guess just double on this guy. Sick. And turn. All right. They're going right for Gale. Uh, I could shield. If I wanted to. Yeah, let's go ahead and shield with a level one spell. Which misses. Tentacle whip. Um, we're cutting words that. Back to the and, spat you out. and actually, you know what? We'll hellish rebuke that as well. Nice. So another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. Yeah. Cool. Shadow hearts. We'll just sacred flame. I think. Or we could do Divine Strike. Why, not, why don't we do that? Cool. Alright. That works. And we'll get a little tiny bit closer. So that we're in the Sword Song. Probably should have done that in the first place. Alright. My turn. Let's grab a bit of healing here. And then we probably just want to go melee for the most part. Oh, Critical Miss. Woof. Oh, somebody crit there. Searing Smite, nice. He sure packs a punch. Alright, Fire Elemental. We'll just go all in on this guy. That's a whiff right there. But we'll get right on top there. Uh, we'll probably just Fire Bolt, I think. Yeah, this is the only real threat that's left. Another 13 damage. We'll move back a tiny bit. And we'll just clean up the Intellect Devourers here a, a little bit. Ah. 
Ooh, a crit with the javelin. That's very cool. And then Will, would you like to do the honors? I'm sure you would. Bells. I didn't think I was going to make it. Thank you. Zeblo. Yeah. Pleasure is mine. Watching gods. The Blade of Frontiers. Will? What happened? I paid the price of angering the wrong devil. And shouldered the cost to spare someone else a worse fate, I'd wager. I owe you an explanation. Much more than that. But first, please, the others, the ambush. Tell me they survived. Yeah, they sure did. Um, some others ended up in a moonrise. Yeah, what happened exactly? You've heard some of it, I'm sure. That I froze, or broke, or some other lie that is kinder than the truth. We were ambushed by cultists, yes. And then I heard her, their false god, whispering promises in my mind. I would be a paladin again, with a god's purpose, a god's power. Everything I needed to protect my people. And all the while, the cult tortured them. They fought and ran and died around me while I imagined myself their savior. By the time I regained my senses, it was too late. I did not just surrender to the Absolute. For a moment, I welcomed it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you were being enthralled. Yeah, I mean, it's mind magic, right? It would be nice to think so, but whatever these monsters twist us into, I believe it begins in us. I won't fair. make excuses. I can't make amends. But I know something of what you came to do. I want to help, if you'll let me. Yeah, of course. Ketherick is below. He thinks you're no longer a menace. Descend and show him how wrong he is. That's if the there plan. are any more survivors to be found, I'll find them and lead them out of this place. That would actually be very helpful. Um... Find your own people. They need you. Yeah, we don't really need him around, I don't think. They have you. Go, my friend. Please, let me do this much. Yeah, absolutely. It would be nice to have him along, but honestly, we, we don't need it, per se. And I would rather have him just uh, escort everybody out. So before we forget, let's for sure take a short rest here. Our last one. And uh, we'll probably call it an episode right here. So when we come back... Uh, we did fight Ketherick Thorn, but it wasn't the final Ketherick Thorn fight. But we'll continue exploring these lower levels and um, get one step closer to hopefully ending Thorm's reign once and for all. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.